I'm excited to announce that the Polk Smart router table and fence plans for you to build this for yourself are in the store right now for you to go to purchase and download. Hi, I'm Ron Polk, and this is the Smart Wood Shop. If you want to get a set of plans to build a smart wood shop for yourself, or one of my workbenches, or this new router table and fence, link in the description of this video down below, where you'll go to our store, you can purchase the plans, and download them instantaneously, 24-7, 365. This router table was a bit of a challenge. In fact, this is the third generation before I finally got it where I wanted it. And in fact, if you have a keen eye and you get the plans, you'll notice that the plans, it's actually slightly different than this one. I have improved this a little bit and I will be making another one shortly here. And when I do, I will record that video. But the, really the change is pretty small. These dados here that are cut through these 20 millimeter holes are set there so that the clamp will be below the surface when you clamp it to your workbench. And by the way, this router table will work with the Smart Total Station or the compact bench and any benches I designed because it's, it, all the holes are cut on the same uh, industry standard program of 20 millimeter holes, 96 millimeter spacing from the edge and spacing between in both directions, and then additionally I add a row of holes 32 millimeters in from the edge the way I do on all of my benches. So this top is essentially a mini version of the top on any of my workbenches. I've shortened these dados because I really didn't need them to run out this far because the router hangs on the outside of the bench on any of the benches. So I've shortened those up to just uh, be a couple long and then I've added uh, another set of dados right here and that is because what I would like to do is actually, instead of putting the router table right flush to the edge, I'd like to also be able to run it out and hang it out to this point. This extends my workbench space so that I have more space for routing and doing other kind of work. What I intend to do is build myself that second router table that I'm going to build. I'm going to actually mount it right beside this one. So I'll have both of my router tables side by side. And then I will be able to also have these function as bench extensions. So they will enlarge the working area of my bench. So it would go in about there. This one would butt in right next to it and hang out just a little bit. So I could set up both of my routers and I could do multiple router operations. Or I could just take the fence off make sure the bit is below the surface and then when I'm working with the table saw I have all of this room to work with the table saw or do assembly or sanding or whatever else I'm doing so I'm, I'm doubling down and making these bench extenders as well as router tables and I really like this fence both the router table and the fence I'm just now showing them to you in the last few videos but I've been actually using these for a couple of months now and as other videos come up, you'll see these in operation. They've been used quite heavily, which is how I figured out I wanted to make a few more adjustments. So I have a video coming out that shows how to make this uh, router fence. But you'll see in it that when I made it, I used a 5-inch hole saw. And I took a single piece of wood, drilled the hole, and then I ripped that piece of wood and then assembled it into this corner. I made an update to this as well to make it simpler to build, I needed the two and a half inches height and two and a half inches depth. And to get that, I needed a five inch uh, hole. Well, I've just made this into a rectangle on the bottom and the top. And that can be done with a, uh, a little jig in your router, or you can cut it on your table saw and miter saw and a, and a jig saw. So there's any number of ways you can do that. But when, when I make my next one of these, uh, very shortly here, I'm going to do that so you'll see uh, how, how I make that. So it, again, it's a, it's a little simpler and not only to make but requires less tooling. So when you get the plans, the plans for the router fence and the router table 
are going to be the updated improved version of what you see here again that's prototyping a lot of times you'll see me using stuff that might be a generation or two old as I continue to improve things I had a lot of things I wanted to accomplish when I was thinking about this design I wanted to go with a bigger router fence the woodpecker that I have which is about the same size as this only it sticks out a lot further I wanted to be able to use it on the smart total station which just didn't allow me to continue using the router the the built-in router station so I knew I needed to bring the router in this direction so I knew that it was gonna have to go beyond the bench my number one challenge my number one goal was I wanted it to be built out of a single piece of 18 millimeter plywood I did not want it any thicker I didn't want it any heavier I didn't want any kind of stuff on the bottom any kind of stiffeners I didn't want anything at all protruding above the surface or below the surface I used the design method I used here was deductive design I'm not additive I did not want to add anything to this one piece of plywood that I cut out I wanted to only remove stuff until it was just right and it is I've used this heavily and you do get a little flex where it's tied to the bench where every it flexes a bit it does not matter it makes zero difference for the quality of your work and and holding up and working day in and day out what I gain from this is that when I'm packing up this can go in my benches slide in my trailer uh, along with these bench extenders that I'm also working on these are prototypes I I'm not done with these yet I'm still I have a ways to go that's version 3 I'm I'm still thinking about lengths and widths and some other attachment things so but that the concept there and the concept here are the same I want to be able to stack these up like a deck of cards I don't again I don't want some big heavy thing and I looked at what I needed to do I'm using this as a finished carpenter so I'm running trim and uh, trim boards and things I'm not putting uh, you know uh, 8 by 12s on this that's framing uh, that's totally different different set of tools these are specialized tools for finish work and there's so much specialization in finish work that I want to design this router table to do that so I achieved that and I'm pretty excited with the way it turned out so it is again a single piece of 18 millimeter plywood there is no strong backs or bracing or anything like that it doesn't need it and then when I take my next one it's gonna fit right here and double as the bench extender as well as my second router table once it's mounted to the bench then I've set this router fence up so that it can drop into these two holes and there is a rabbit a shallow dado it's more of a rabbit on both edges of this um, groove and that allows this bolt head and washer to ride up inside the bottom side of the router table because at some point the uh, bolt head is over the top of the bench and so I cannot have that protruding so I've created that on the bottom and I wanted this to be easy to take off and on because again I want to switch from routing operations to maybe assembly or doing some ripping or things on the table saw and so with the second one here I'll have a big area a much bigger area than the um, smart tool station allowed so to make this easy to adjust and easy to take off and on all I have to do is drop line up these two bolt heads and washers and I want to make sure that the washers drop down in fact I've considered shopping around for a washer head bolt and I think that might be a better uh, better thing because you can um, if you don't get that just right it might uh, not it, it might come on top and you might not notice and so you won't get as much holding power so I want to make sure that the washers fall into those holes I can slide in to make the adjustment I need and then tighten it down and to move it around once it once those washers are in place they won't go anywhere I don't need to um, loosen them as much just enough to move the fence just slightly and then I have a split fence so that I can dial it into whatever width of blade I'm using so I can bring it pretty close to the cutter this is both safer 
and gives you a better cut. And then I also have added the cover here to protect from cutting myself with the spinning blade here. Also turn that into a vacuum um, port as well. And so vacuum hoses are all standard sizing, the big and the small. I think it's two or two and a quarter and then one and three quarter, whatever they are, they're all the same. All hoses are the same. And so rather than running a, another hose, since I'm moving from uh, miter saw to uh, routing right here, I've just got a single vacuum and I just pull it off of the, the uh, miter saw and then just plug it in there. And I use a multi-tap on the vacuum so that both the miter saw and the router are plugged into the same vacuum. So whichever tool I turn on will activate that vacuum. A lot of thought went into this and many years of having multiple router tables and setups, things that I've built, things that I've bought. And I am by far the most satisfied with this for my day in and day out work. My woodworking is heavily based around routing, hand routers and table routers. So it was nothing for me to go to the table router for lots of operations, but this makes it a lot more fun and I'm a lot quicker to move to it. One more thing about the plans. As always, I set my plans up and formatted the text and the numbers and dimensioning all to be printed at 11 by 17. It's really difficult to make it eight and a half by 11 and have the uh, information uh, legible without just filling the page. So that seems to be the ideal size. That being said, it's a PDF, so it can be printed larger than that and smaller than that. That set of plans can be printed any size you want on any printer you want. But I am moving to being completely paperless. In fact, I've been moving that direction for years and I'm there now. I have built a bunch of stuff recently in the shop and not once have I printed it. In fact, I got rid of my large format printer. I just don't want to bother buying the papers and the inks and doing that anymore. I have found that working with my tablet in the office is great. I've got to have this anyway to record these videos because right now this is uh, controlling the camera and I can switch over and see what that camera's seeing. So I've got to have this in the shop. And I've tried putting cases to keep dust off and everything. But you know, these things are sealed. Uh, I'm going to say they're watertight, but they're, they're durable. And yeah, I could probably break it, but it, it's worth having in the shop and, and being able to use it. But what I've found is that I've always got my phone with me. I'm always streaming the radio and listening to it on my AirPods. And because I'm in the Mac world, I'm doing everything on my MacBook Pro and I drop these PDFs into a note and it's instantly shared across all my devices. I don't have to put it on my phone or put it on my tablet. It's just there. So I've always got my phone in my pocket and even though it's a smaller screen, because it's a PDF and I can zoom in, it's not like a JPEG where it would get pixelated. It's a, I, I guess it would be like a vector. So no matter how you big, big you make it, uh, it, it stays crisp. And so even on my phone here, I can just zoom right in and see any kind of detail. So I've actually just been leaving the iPad set up on the side so that I can see the camera and using my phone. I've built a workbench with lots of detail uh, just with my phone and I built this router table. I've done these extensions. I've been working on a lot of things, a lot of interesting things and there's a lot of videos already made and a lot of videos coming, but I've, I've done it all with putting the designs on my phone and no printouts. And I'll tell you, it is efficient. If you build one of these for yourself, be sure to send me a few photos that I can share with everybody else and give me some feedback. I'd like to know what you think. Thanks for dropping into the Smart Wood Shop. You stay safe and have a great day.